doing a little pruning to train the plants is a good thing. These are some of the most cared for marijuana plants in Anchorage. The more times the plants get touched by people, I think the better they perform. Babied and clipped, conditions are perfect here. And these plants will produce marijuana products that will be sold at top dollar. Right now we're on our week three strip. So I'm removing all the fan leaves to allow for better light penetration to hopefully have better bud development. At this grown owned by Enlightened Alaska, the plants go from well cared for sprouts to fully blooming buds. We harvest about 60 to 75 pounds every three weeks. In this 15,000 square foot space, marijuana is grown and manufactured and will eventually be sold at Enlightened Alaska and other shops in the state. That means two different marijuana licenses. It's called vertical integration and it may be the key to being a successful marijuana business in Alaska. And it's come a long way since from what we when we brought plants in in the beginning and what we've grown up to. From here, the marijuana goes to the retail store. You have a great day, man. We're a vertically integrated business, and that's really unique in this industry. Uh, so we grow our own product, we extract it into oils, we manufacture other products with them, so like cookies, capsules, tinctures, and we sell them all here. Enlightened is one of the original shops to open after legalization in 2015. And then in this case, we have all of our flour that we grew. So. And it's a crowded industry. I do think that there's more shops than are needed. The trip is much anticipated. COVID slowed road trips for the club for the past three years. Now they're back from around the state to celebrate their 60th anniversary and make the sometimes grueling 60 mile drive from Chitna to McCarthy on an unpaved gravel road. Philip Morrow will be doing it in his 1928 Model A Ford. I've owned this one for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. I have three Model A's. Now, 91, he says the cars remind him of the type he drove as a college student. When yeah. you're driving this vehicle, does it make you feel young oh, again? Yes, it does. <laughs> if the vintage cars and even some of their drivers seem too delicate for the trip. For traveling, I, I put uh, these plastic uh, covers over my lights. Think again. Well, we do a lot of waving. Art Isham and his wife Tamia have put some major miles on their 1930 Ford Model A. We go down to Homer, we've gone to Soldovia, we've gone to Cordova on the ferry, you name it, we've, we've been there. David said if she wanted to prove her innocence, she'd have to cooperate with his investigation and do exactly what he said. He told me, uh, we need to secure my finances. We need to secure my funds so the government won't seize them. Because what they're going to do now is that they're going to uh, take all of my funds from all of my accounts to make sure I'm not going to run away or whatever, right? David told Vicky to go to a grocery store in Eagle River and drain her bank account by purchasing all the $500 Nike gift cards she could afford. And then he told me they'll issue me a new social security number and all the funds would be returned to me after the investigation. Vicky was instructed to photograph the cards and pin numbers on the back and text those to a secure government phone number. And I tell him, I think I think I was able to send it. Did you get it? He's like, let me check with my colleague. And then like 10 seconds later, I don't know, he's like, oh yeah, I got it, perfect. And he's so happy. Beyond the water damage and loss of roofs, porches and power to many homes, much of the village's infrastructure also couldn't stand up to the storm. You know, this is part of the area where we thought it was high enough, but you could see after that storm, it's, it's not high enough. <laughs> Their boardwalks and bridges were ripped apart and roads washed away. All underwater. Mm -hmm. Access to water and power also quickly became a concern. That tank is back in place, it was toppled over. And another tank, it was just about toppling over. While it's going to be a long and tough road to get this village back to normal. Water went all the way around. What they can't repair or replace is the land this village sits on. So after the storm, this all got eroded from the storms are still waves. They expect erosion when big storms come in, but not like this. Before that, it came out further. Daniel Cernick, a middle school science teacher, took GPS measurements. Yeah, I figured it'd be like 10, 15 feet or something like that. 
but it was much worse than he could have imagined. Where I'm standing out there is where the edge of the dune line used to meet the ocean. Oh, wow. That's about 360 feet, well over a football field's length, gone in one storm. It's like 70 years worth of erosion at once. That's what it should have looked like as I was an old geezer or even dead. It should have been back in that far, not in just one storm. It's the erosion that has many people concerned, including tribal leaders. Where should we go? Go play out, bring our kids down here. We can't help nature, but it'll just, we'll just disappear. Leaving them little choice. It's just the world's changing and the climates and weather itself. I thought it would take longer, but all of a sudden this storm, it, a wake up call for us to see where should we move. Chief Tall believes those discussions need to start now. We need to start the process of trying to move the community up further up or move totally to a different location. It's not going to just take one entity, it's going to take all of us. I survive or don't survive. As a new day begins in Anchorage, a sleepy town wakes up. It's eight degrees. It's a cold that's hard to escape. Well, how long have you been sleeping outside for? 10 years. 10 years of this. Gil Jacko wants a cigarette. Oh, no, but no cigarette. Jacko says these dumpsters behind an apartment complex are some of the best in town. Sometimes there's nothing. Anything worth it in there? Not really. I'm just looking for a cigarette, though. Other times, he's lucky. Candles are very good. This is a cold world with high stakes where even friends are not always loyal. He ungratefully stole my, my M&Ms the last time I saw him. <laughs> so you took his book? No, he left it there. He left it? Oh. Uh. Yeah. We met Jacko on 15th Avenue, and he took us to visit homeless camps. He told us how he survived living outside all these years. Nice to have a mat when you're on a cold concrete. Yeah. At first, he was friendly. The more we talked, he got sadder. You gotta get off the streets. Not everyone survives this life. Police don't say outdoor deaths are homeless people, but the ones who've died outside have been found in parks, off trails, and in camps. Yeah, nice to meet you. Everyone we spoke with who told us they were homeless say they either know someone who has died living outside or they have come close to death themselves. It's very, very cold and you get hungry and thirsty and um, it's not a good place to be. Some people get frostbite, some people don't survive. Sometimes it's kind of tough, but you, you just get used to it. According to Anchorage Police, more people have died outside this year than past years. In 2020, there were 20 deaths. In 2021, 19. This year, the number is higher, and those numbers only count those found outside, not those who make it to a medical facility or people who may die in a shelter from cold weather related problems. These deaths are listed as not criminal in nature or nothing suspicious was found. The one connection being found dead outside. One person that I knew, I can't remember her name, but she passed away a long time ago. There are a lot of reasons people are homeless in Anchorage. The Anchorage Coalition to End Homelessness says up to 3,000 people in Anchorage use some type of homeless service every month. David Rittenberg of Brother Francis Shelter says the first step must be getting people into emergency shelter. Well, I think before someone can start thinking about housing and before someone can start thinking about updating their resume and before someone can start thinking about um, finding income and a job, they need to know that they're safe. They need to know where their next meal is coming from. They need to know that they have a warm, safe place to stay at that night. But many aren't going. Walk around and look for um, cardboard. You know, it's not better than sleeping in a house. Substance abuse is also a barrier. And I've been struggling on the streets mm -hmm. with alcoholism. Yeah. The older you get, the harder it is for you to maintain your heat. The oldest person to die outside this year was 74. In September, a person was found dead inside a porta potty off East Tudor Road and View Circle. Several people have died inside tents in the woods. This used to be a large camp. In October, a woman was found dead lying inside a tent just a few feet from several homes. It's difficult and often a short life. People who care, 
Just don't care, man.